last few days, I've done a huge amount of testing around the FCC stroke ham file modes on the DJI Avata 2. And I'm pleased to say I do have a bit of an update for you. Now, I did have an initial video where I walked you through the current situation with the Avata 2, and that was the only way to get into FCC mode was to use an app such as Drone Tweaks, and now we have Drone Hacks as well. Whilst that is technically still correct, there are some things we now know that are quite different to before, but also work very differently to what we had on the DJI original Avata and the DJI 03 system. What I can tell you though today, I'm pleased to be able to share, there is a way to be able to get more RF power from this system for free. You don't need to purchase any apps, but there isn't everything for everyone here. And this one is going to take a little bit of explaining. This video is sponsored by Grey Arrows Drone Club, the team behind Drone Scene, which is a map of places to fly in the UK. They've got a really busy discussion forum. They offer regular competitions and prize draws with thousands of pounds worth of prizes available. And they also offer up to five million pounds public liability insurance as part of their membership. They are also going to be doing some giveaways on the DJI Avata 2 as well. And if you're interested in checking them out, there will be a link to their discussion forum in the description. Okay, so just to explain where things have been in the past, with the release of the original DJI FPV system, there was a file called NACO that pushed it into FCC mode for CE users, and a file called NACO underscore power that would push it into 1200 milliwatts mode. Then we had the FPV drone, the Avata and O3, and for those systems, NACO didn't work properly, but we had the HAM file. That pushed the system into FCC mode, and for CE users, increased the RF power, made manual channel selection available, and actually, for FCC users, allowed them to select more channels than they would be able to select in normal FCC mode. With the release of the Avata 2, there was a lot of questions around does the ham file still work, and it was my initial findings that it didn't do what it did before, and the assumption was that it didn't work at all. There were people saying it was working, there was feedback coming to me from various places saying they've been told it should work, but the basics were, in my tests and many other people's tests, the ham file did not unlock the channels, did not appear to do what it did before for CE users. What was rather interesting though was the fact that we knew the ham file was working because in FCC regions on the Avata 2 it was still allowing them to get more channels than it was as standard. So for instance in 50 and 60 megahertz mode it would allow it to actually have three channels rather than the one. So we knew the ham file was doing something. However it didn't appear to be doing anything in CE regions. Now, after that, I spent a lot of time doing some testing and it was found that the FCC mod apps from the likes of Drone Tweaks and later Drone Hacks did push the Avata 2 into FCC mode. And in fact, it did remain persistent. And when used with the ham file, not only remained persistent, but also gave you the additional channels as well. Now, over the last few days, there's been a lot of reports of people saying the ham file is unlocking the speed in EU regions. There's been people saying it's been doing all sorts of other things. So I've spent a huge amount of time digging into the RF behavior of the Avata 2, and I have learned an incredible amount, including the fact that actually the ham file is working. It's just not working in the way we expected. Now, the first thing to understand with the ham file in CE regions on the Avata 2 is that it is not opening up the manual channel selection. You will find that the auto channel selection is greyed out and you have no option to push it into manual channel modes. And this remains the same no matter if you use the ham file or not. Today, the only way I know to be able to give you manual channel selection on the Avata 2 is to use one of the hacked apps such as Drone Tweaks or Drone Hacks that will push it into FCC mode via the DJI Fly app. But what I can tell you is the ham file 
does actually increase the RF output on the DJI Avata even in CE regions, even though it is not unlocking the additional channels. I have triple checked this and I can confirm that the ham file on the SD card of the goggles will open up additional RF power and basically push it into the FCC RF power mode. What is interesting though is that it isn't actually the FCC RF power mode, it is an increased RF power output because in FCC regions the DJI Avata 2 only works in either 2.4 or 5.8 gigs. In CE regions though the Avata 2 will work in 2.4, 5.2 and 5.8 gigs. And when the drone is in CE mode, we regularly see it jump into that 5.2 gigahertz band. However, when it is in FCC mode, either officially or via one of the Drone Tweaks Drone Hacks apps, it again only stays between 2.4 and 5.8. What is rather interesting about the ham file is that it is increasing the output that what appears to match the FCC output, but it still has the option of going into 2.4, 5.2 or 5.8 gigahertz. The only modes that appear to be affected though by the RF output increase is 5.8. The 5.2 gigahertz mode has a fixed RF level. It isn't available in FCC, so it doesn't appear to increase in CE with the ham file. However, I can absolutely say that the 5.8 gig mode definitely increases to the FCC style level when comparing it to the levels that you get via the hacked apps. So today, yes, if you want more RF power and you're legally able to do it on the DJI Avata, you can use the ham file in CE regions. My understanding is as well, it will also unlock the drone speed limit in CE regions as well. Unfortunately though, if you do want manual channel selection, you're going to have to still use one of the hacked apps such as Drone Tweaks or Drone Hacks. Now I can also confirm the ham file works on both the DJI FPV Remote 3 as well as the DJI Love Toy 3 Motion Controller 3. Also, the ham file is persistent. It doesn't specifically require you to keep it on the SD card. It doesn't require you to do anything every boot. Once you have done it once, it will stay there and it will not be affected by the official DJI Fly app either. The only time it will reset is if you actually reset the goggles back to factory or you connect them to Assistant 2 from DJI. What I'm going to do next is walk you through the process of doing this and then I'll come back and share with you some additional thoughts. Now to create the file itself is very straightforward. You should use a text editor such as Notepad++ on PC or an alternative version for Mac. Please note using Notepad or text editor as standard may not work. Now what you need to do is create a brand new file. We're going to leave it blank and then we're going to save it as ham underscore cfg underscore support. We're then going to select the file type as all types and then I'm going to save that to a location which I'll be able to find it and place onto the SD card. If you have done this properly you should have a file that looks like this. It is simply labeled as a file zero bytes in size with the name ham underscore cfg underscore support. You then should take that file and place it onto the SD card for your goggles. My advice is to actually format the SD card in the goggles first, then put the SD card onto your PC, transfer the file over and then place that into the goggles. We then simply insert that SD card into the slot on our goggles. I've already got mine there. Then it is simply a process of powering up your goggles first, then power up your desired remote controller, either the FPV Remote 3 or the DJI Love Toy 3. Then once those two have connected, power up your drone. And if all has gone well, it will then have entered this FCC power mode. There is no easy way to tell if it's actually worked. There is no way to look and go to the manual selection. Unfortunately, the only way you will know it's worked is if you're able to fly over the speed limitation in Euro regions 
or you simply get better RF performance. OK, so to try and share with you some additional thoughts and summarise exactly what is going on here. Before I do that, though, I just want to say getting to the point I am here today has been extremely difficult. O4 is substantially different to the previous systems. The original DJI FPV system was very dumb in the sense of it would stay on the channel, you left it, and the RF power was whatever you set. There was no dynamic behaviour at all. We then saw O3 where there was definitely a big step change. It was dynamic with regards to its channel selection in auto, and there was a small amount of change in RF behaviour depending on the signal, but that is nothing like what I'm now seeing here on 04. In fact, the only way to get the 04 system to really show you its maximum RF output is almost forcing it to the point of signal loss. To do the testing I've done, I ended up having to fix the aircraft here in the workshop with the spectrum analyzer and then have the goggles and the remote go wandering and monitor its behavior as the signal drops off. And then I was able to see the difference and the limits between CC E mode, FCC and HAM. The reality is O4 is a lot different to O3 in many ways. Not only is it dynamic with the RF power, but it is dramatically jumping around the band, whereas O3 would just jump around within a few channels. O4 will jump between 5.8 and 5.2 gigs in CE, or 5.8 and 2.4 gigs in FCC mode. And it's actually very hard to pin it down at times because it's constantly moving around. And when you're doing these tests, you end up just having to do it again and again and again to try and get a picture of what's going on and if you're lucky it might stand still for a few moments so you can actually watch it. Now to try and summarize all of this the simplest way to think about it is the Avata 2 has four different modes of operation. You have CE mode which is limited in speed, limited to 25 milliwatts of power, auto channels only but can use three frequency bands. You then have CE mode plus ham file. You're no longer limited in speed and it gives you the same speed as FCC. You're no longer limited in RF power and it gives you the same power as FCC. However, you still have three bands of operations and you're still limited to auto channel mode with no manual channel selection. The third mode is then normal FCC mode does allow you to manually select channels. It doesn't have the speed limitation, although it is limited to two bands of operation. You do have the maximum RF power. And the final mode is the fourth one, which is FCC plus ham. It is exactly the same as FCC, apart from the fact it gives you additional channels in manual mode. So in 50 megahertz carrier mode, you will get three channels instead of one. And 20 and 10 megahertz carrier modes, you will get seven channels instead of three. One last little thing I just want to throw on this, and I will be covering this in a future video, is in all of my testing, regardless of ham file or FCC mode, the goggles RF output doesn't appear to change. But again, that could also be a lot more dynamic than I was expecting. And I'm doing a lot more testing on that, and I'll be talking about that in my future O4 video. As I said, this is incredibly complicated, but the great news is if you want more RF power and the speed restriction removed in CE mode, simply place the ham file on your SD card and you should be good to go. Unfortunately, though, if you do still want the ability to manually select channels in CE regions, you're going to have to buy either drone tweaks or drone hacks because they're the only apps today that will unlock that auto channel and manual channel selection. Now, I really hope you have found this interesting. I'm going to have a much deeper dive into the RF behavior of 04 and the Avata 2 coming in the future. And if you're interested in seeing that, please do make sure you are subscribed to the channel. If you'd like to support us to allow us to keep making content like this, please do consider checking out the links to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee. It is only through the support of my patrons I'm able to keep making content on this channel. And if you'd like to support us to allow us to make more in the future, please do consider checking it out. I want to say a huge thank you to all of my patrons. We would not be able to do this without your support. Now, if you have any questions, put it down below. Stay safe. I will speak to you soon.